I'm going to learn how to fly from this guy. Meet Richard Browning, inventor and chief test pilot of the Gravity Jet Suit. What he's achieved is an actual flying rig that only weighs a couple of dozen pounds that a human can wear on their body. I've always had a fascination and a real passion for flight. I had a background from uh, calisthenics training and before that in the Royal Marines Reserve in the UK. And that taught me a lot about the capability of the human body and mind when really focused on a challenge. And I thought if I take that inspiration and apply it to how humans can fly, why not just go super minimalist and add just the right amount of horsepower to the human mind and body and see if you could approach the challenge of flight in that way. It's just one of those ideas that has ended up, well, really taking off. It took Richard nearly two years to develop, test, and master the art of flying his prototype jet suit. And I'm going to attempt to learn how to fly it in just a matter of hours. Walk me through the basics. We've got a jet suit here, which is made up of five jet engines, real micro versions of the gas turbines you have on a jet fighter or a airplane you go on holiday in. Now, the arrangement we've ended up with is two on each arm and one round the back. And if you imagine that really between those five engines, they create like three legs of a camera tripod. Rather than controlling the throttle of all of those engines, it's worked really well to do something called vectoring. The idea is, as you squeeze on the power, you're, you're leaning forward slightly, so that rear engine is actually leaning oh, right. back a bit. So that's right. your that's one leg of your three-legged camera tripod. Oh, you, ah, okay. okay. And then you've got the other leg here and the other leg here. And the idea is you squeeze on that power and then as you bring the arms inwards, gradually all of that power is enough to offset your weight and the weight of the system. And that's when, as I hopefully demonstrate to you, you'll see my feet just come kind of effortlessly off the ground. So in terms of flight control, you accelerate the throttle to the preset power level that's required for your weight and the ambient temperature. There's some variability there. Squeeze that trigger in and you feel that power. Once that power is there and pointing outwards, you just start bringing it down, and as you vector down, you lift off. If you actually want to rotate yourself, all you're doing is just sort of robot arms kind of action, but you're just pointing a little bit of thrust backwards one way and a little bit of thrust forwards the other way, and that will induce a rotation. If you want to go left, then actually just pointing your right-hand engines to the side will actually take you left, and the same the other side, the same with forward and backwards. If you want to go high, you keep vectoring down. If you want to come down, you flare back out and then you just gently sink. I'm really, really looking forward to you having a go. <laughs> Looks like you are too. I am. <laughs> yes, I'm excited, but I'm also not reckless. We'll be taking some significant safety precautions before I go airborne. In a few minutes, I'm going to put on Richard's jet suit, under which I'm going to wear a harness, because I'm going to be connected to a rope <laughs> so that I may train to fly without the high stakes of dying in case I can't fly. Feel the trigger as well, so pull the yeah. trigger, Got that. the trigger. My goal here is that Richard teaches me enough that I can fly untethered, because if I'm going to be Iron Man, I'm going to fly without a rope, but I only have a few hours. We have the amount of time we have today for me to get comfortable on that rig so that I can try it in the Iron Man armor. Honestly, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do. There you go, that's your thousand horsepower of jet seat. We're going to start at 50% power for my body weight and then increase the power output in 10% increments. But it's enough to be able to feel the dynamics of if you do that, guess what, you get blown that way and, and your brain can start coding the action and reaction experience.
That is fascinating. It is a completely unique experience to have so much horsepower facing down from my arms. Strangely enough, it feels exactly like watching Tony Stark land. It's... I am not very articulate right now because what I just experienced, I don't really have common words for. And that was only at 50% power. Unlike the unlimited flying time of the Iron Man suit in the movies, Richard's jet suit has about a five to nine minute flight time depending on conditions before it has to be refueled, giving us a built-in break for some adjustments. Each time we refuel, we just give him more and more power. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> and essentially, that demands of him to adopt this vectoring principle of holding the engines out, feeling that power, and then controlling it progressively and bringing it down. It takes a tremendous amount of strength. My left arm is actually giving out a little bit. This certainly validates that it's not maybe as easy as it looks, certainly to go from no experience to trying to fly in one day. This really confirms how challenging that can be. This right here is one of the hardest skills I've ever had to learn. I taught myself how to ride a unicycle. Hell, I drove an Indy car and didn't pop the clutch. But none of that comes close to comparing to this. So we started that last one at 100%. He's gonna have to learn to be able to hold that hover, and we should see that, but he's swinging everywhere. That does put into question his progress today, at least. Yeah, you look tired. <laughs> I am, yeah. <laughs> I don't have much more time to learn this machine before getting in the Iron Man armor. So frankly, at this point, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fly as Iron Man. But that's my goal. <laughs>